With the M1 processors introduced last year and the introduction of M1 Pro and M1 Max processors from last week, there are three different processors on a Mac you can buy at the moment. But which processor is right for you? We'll find out in today's video. Let's get started. If you are considering buying a Mac, you have three different processor options. The M1, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. You can get the M1 in the Mac Mini, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 13-inch and the iMac. Meanwhile, you can get the M1 Pro and the M1 Max with a 14-inch or 16-inch MacBook Pro. But other than the form factor, which processor is right for you? Simply put, the M1 Pro is more powerful than the M1 and the M1 Max is more powerful than the M1 Pro. If you understand your needs and your workflow and if you understand how powerful each processor processor is, it's easy to pick the right one. Let's have a quick comparison between the three processors. I've segmented the video into four parts. CPU performance, graphic performance, memory and price. First the CPU performance. You can get the M1 with 8 CPU cores, the M1 Pro and M1 Max with up to 10 CPU cores. It's not just the number of cores. Of the 8 cores in M1, 4 are high performance cores while the other 4 are efficiency cores. Meanwhile, of the 10 cores in M1 Pro and M1 Max, 8 are high performance cores and two are efficiency cores, which is double that of M1. Generally, higher the performance cores, faster the processor. The M1 processor is plenty powerful for most people and competes with some flagship Intel and AMD based chips. So if you are a consumer with non-extreme workloads, any of the M1 Max should work very well for you. It's extremely power efficient with great battery life and decent graphic performance too. For people who need better performance than the M1 can consider M1 Pro or the M1 Max. The M1 Pro and the Max Max both have 8 high performance cores and 2 efficiency cores, double the number of high performance cores from the M1. The M1 Pro also has 33 billion transistors, that's twice the M1. And the M1 Max has 57 billion transistors, which is twice the number of M1 Pro. Parallel workloads which can take advantage of multiple cores like compiling code can benefit from the M1 Pro and M1 Max. For even more extreme CPU workloads, pick the M1 Max. Second, the graphic performance. The M1 has up to 8 graphic cores. I use a Mac Mini with 8 core GPU and I do final cut editing of 4K footage with multiple layers easily. Never notice buffering or lags. I also edit photos off of Lightroom and Photoshop. Works absolutely fine. For day to day tasks, M1 is more than sufficient. But if you have a more graphic intensive workload, M1 Pro and M1 Max have a big step up in graphic performance from M1. You can get up to 16 graphic cores on the M1 Pro and up to 32 graphic cores on the M1 Max. If this sounds complicated, to you, ask yourself this. Do you use graphic intensive workloads like 8K video editing, graphic intensive gaming, 3D graphic rendering or something similar? Then the M1 Max could be valuable to you. Especially for video editing, you can take advantage of higher graphic cores and the dedicated additional video encode and decode engines on the M1 Max. The M1 Max has one video decode engine, two video encode engine, two ProRes video engines compared to one video encode, one video decode and one ProRes engine. Keep in mind, these are all for video dedicated workloads. The M1 has one low power encode decode engine and no ProRes engine. Graphic performances aside, if you do a lot of multitasking or a memory intensive workload, choosing a processor based on the memory configuration is an option too. The M1 offers a maximum memory of 16 GB. If you need more, you need to jump to the M1 Pro which offers maximum memory configuration up to 32 GB. If you need even more, then the M1 Max is your option which offers up to 64 GB of unified memory. Keep in mind that the M1 processors all have memory built into the chip, so they are never upgradable or expandable. Once you buy it, that's it. So get the one with your future requirements in mind as well. You may need more memory later. Finally, the price. Obviously, with each step up, you're gonna have to pay more. Budget can be an important factor deciding your Mac. With all considered, you have seven different processor options available. I would recommend staying away from the M1 eight core CPU and seven core GPU. The difference between the seven core GPU GPU, 8 core GPU is negligible depending on the model. Due to the form factors, there is a huge step up in terms of cost from M1 to M1 Pro. The starting price of a Mac with M1 Pro is $2000. So if you are looking for a Mac sub $2000 budget, M1 is your only option. If you can shell out over $2000, then be ready to spend up to $700 just for the processor. There is a catch though. If you pick the M1 Max, it comes with a minimum 32 gigs of memory instead of 16, which will add 
add up more cost from just your processor. Your total can easily escalate. You can configure your 16 inch MacBook Pro up to $6100. Okay, hope you found this video useful. A subscription to the channel would be amazing too. Happy shopping. See you in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye bye.